Celia and her lovely daughter Gail, my mother, Arlene, Sharon, Butch, and Jeannie. And I believe we'll be joined shortly by Rick. Unfortunately, Eileen is not here today to join us. And I'm Danny, of course. And we're going to ask Celia some questions about her early years in Poland to pick up where we left off in our last interview and then talk a little bit about her life in New York when she came to America. So Celia, just to get started, uh, going back to Poland, uh, tell us a little bit about the house that you grew up in. What Do you remember what the house looked like and the neighborhood around the house? Yes. The house was actually, uh, uh, considering those years, my house was beautiful and large. But all it consists that I was one family room that was huge. Mm. And all our beds were in that one room. We all slept in that one room. How many of you were sleeping in that well, room? Well, that time, it was my mother. My father was away most of the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to leave that out. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was my sister Rose, my sister Frida, I, and I guess, and my little brother, Murray. So you all slept in the same room? Yes. What about the other brothers? I don't remember much about my brother Irving, where he was at that time. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. We also had another bedroom, uh -huh. a much smaller bedroom, and Irving had his privacy there. Okay. And what about my mother? Your mother spent most of the time in Vienna. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Sylvia, when you can you describe the house a little bit more to us? What what would you see if you walked into the house? What would you see in front of your eyes? What would be? Was there tables and uh, and furniture and what was on the walls and? You know, we had pictures on the wall. Um, family members, all of us, mm -hmm. and there was no artwork. Was there a photograph of your father? Pardon? Was there a photograph of your father? My, we, there was one large one of my mother, my father. Uh -huh. Do you still have that? Uh, no, I don't. I have no idea what happened to all mm -hmm. that. Eileen has it. Really? I think so, Eileen has it. Mm -hmm. So Murray, for some reason I thought Murray was the only one who was born in America. No, he was born in Poland too? Yeah, Murray was born yeah. in Poland, yes. So what else uh, can you tell us about the house? You said there were three rooms, is that right? So there was the room where everybody was, slept? No, one a very large room and a smaller room. Uh -huh. Was there a kitchen? Oh. Or was it part of the big room? The kitchen? I had just a little wall between the large room. It was just like, like I say, just a little wall between the kitchen and the large room. Uh, actually, a very large stove, which everybody had those days, because that functioned as a furnace. It was always going, except in the summertime. Mm -hmm. And there was always some kind of food there, mm -hmm. a casserole. Mm -hmm. What What about the bathroom? Pardon? The bathroom. I get it. There was no bathroom. It was outside? Mm -hmm. Oh, the bathroom, Celia. Do you know what? I, it, Outdoors. It was all outdoors. It was outdoors. So in the winter, was it cold in the winter? Oh, uh, of course. So you'd have to go outside uh, in the yes. winter. Yes. Yeah. That was the only 
everybody had that, that kind of a, Nobody had a Linda bathroom. Where did you shower? I don't remember showering. I you just remember. remember taking baths. Oh, you took baths, yeah. yeah. In the house, you'd bring water? In the house. There was a very large tub there mm -hmm. where we all bathed. Mm -hmm. um, did, you were near the river, weren't you? Very close, near the uh, river and also the well, where we got our water from. The Brunnen. The Brunnen. <laughs> yeah. Right? Is that what you called it? Yes. What did you call it in Polish? Brunnen. <laughs> well, it was actually Jewish. Is it Yiddish? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jew, yeah. Brunnen. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we used, we went to the, well, my mother didn't do it. She was able to hire help. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no exchange of money. It was barter. Yes, on the first tape you described how your mother was not at home very much, that she well, was that with her was, friends. I'll tell you, but first of all, I'll tell you, if my mother hired someone to do the laundry, and they did it in the privé. And we also enjoyed the river in the summertime. Mm -hmm. It was delightful to swim there. Mm -hmm. And what did she give in exchange for doing the laundry? Uh, my father made a lot of uh, utensils mm -hmm. to cook in yeah. and to bathe in. And my mother had all that. Mm -hmm. So that was the exchange. He was a tinsmith, a blecher. What, uh, where did you spend your time in the house, Sylvia? So did you have a part of the I house? I did not spend much time in the house. You didn't? I was very young mm -hmm. when I joined the Hashomer Hatzayim. Mm -hmm. And I was there practically except for school. I spent my time with them. So was there a part and of... a wonderful leader. Tell us, tell us about the leader. Go ahead. She was a uh, very, very uh, she's a very uh, talented woman yeah. who sang beautifully and danced, and she taught us how to sing and dance. Mm. Which and she read to us, and uh, the, uh, that's how we spent our time at the house. So there was a special room that was on her property where we uh, learned a great deal. She taught us the Hebrew language, although I also went to Hebrew school. You did? Yeah. Just like a boy. Three years. Wow. You, you, was that unusual? Three for... miserable years. <laughs> <laughs> you learned Hebrew or Yiddish? Hebrew. Not Yiddish? Yiddish? No. Yiddish I knew from my mother and my father. Uh huh. So what did they speak in the house? Did they speak Yiddish, Yiddish. or Polish? Yiddish. Not my Polish? mother and my father never spoke Polish in the house. No? No. Why were those, why was it three miserable years? Uh, because they were very old-fashioned rabbis. Mm -hmm. And they used to hit us. Mm -hmm. If we didn't learn something immediately, they had no patience. They really used to beat us with a ruler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> were you one when of the only... When my mother found that out, she withdrew me. She would what? She withdrew me from Hebrew school. Oh, really? When she, she found out... How uh, my brother remained. Well, he, that was a duty. He was a boy. He had to th three years endure the cruel treatment. Mm. But my mother took me out. Was it unusual for girls to go to the Hebrew no, school? No, that was the no. uh, standard at that time. But girls had to learn uh, how to dance. 
Did Aunt Frida learn how to dobbin and did Aunt Jenny learn how to dobbin? Yeah, well, Jenny. And Aunt Rose. Jenny, I don't remember. I don't know why. Because uh, she wasn't there so much. Oh, she was I guess so. Early. Yeah. So Aunt Frida and Aunt Rose went to Hebrew no, school? Rose didn't mm -hmm. want to go. She was revolutionary. She. Uh, <laughs> what about Aunt Frida? Uh, yeah, she did go. What do you mean that uh, Aunt Rose was revolutionary? What do you mean by well, Rose didn't do what she was told to do. She was very strong and had her own ideas. And she didn't do conventional. She led a different life. What kind of things did she do? Uh, she was able to, uh, she smoked at an early age, which is very unusual. Yeah. And uh, she went out with guys and a lot of boyfriends. Oh. In Poland? Yeah. Yeah. She was, as a matter of fact, she, at a very young age, she was engaged to a very handsome guy. Jewish? Was he yes. Jewish? Yeah. He happened to be Jewish. But she would not have cared. She went out. So what happened to him? Well, we left Poland, oh. nothing happened. But it was her plan to have him come to the United States. But she didn't have money, and my father didn't want to give money, so that dream died. When you went to regular school, did you feel any anti-Semitism? Every day, every minute I was there. Yeah? Yeah. Very cruel teacher. I'll never forget her. She uh, singled out the few Jewish boys and girls and uh, made fun of them. Yeah, you mentioned in the first uh, interview that... Um, Say it louder. You mentioned in the first interview, I think, that uh, she would actually also hit, hit you. Yeah, with a ruler. Mm -hmm. We ask about how many and uh, we had to wear certain clothes, and if we didn't. To oh, everybody, or just yeah, everybody, everybody yeah. who went to school. Yeah. Go ahead. And my mother had my clothes made to order to conform with that. What kind of clothes did you have to wear? Very pretty. <laughs> Very pretty. Yeah. pretty. Yeah. It was a, a skirt, a matching top. Yeah. It was what nice. color skirt? I don't. Whatever. Was it a pleated skirt? Was it a long skirt? No, not a long skirt. A short skirt? You, you, it wasn't. Ple couldn't be pleated or otherwise, but it was ni a nice outfit. So Sylvia, was did most of the Jews in in Shendishau go to schools with non-Jews like you? There wasn't a there wasn't a separate Jewish school. You were all mixed together. Uh, the only the high what do they call it? What do they call it? Yeah, Cheder. Yeah, that was the only thing. We we there was no choice. Mm -hmm. The government actually made you go to school. But there were only a small number of, of Jewish students. Well, it was a small town. Mm -hmm. So you went until what grade did you go to school there? Uh, I went, uh, I didn't go to high school. I would say I went, what the equivalent of the seventh grade. Because you, is that because you left? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Aunt Frida and Aunt Rose went to high school actually in Poland. Yes. Yeah. Did you have any good memories of school? Was there anything you not enjoyed? A, not, not really. Mm -hmm. I just remember the teacher's cruelty and her uh, shooting us as an exa bad example. Were you, were, did the kid, the non-Jewish kids, were they friends with you? Or they would, or you were only friends with the Jews? I had some non-Jewish 